These are the movies that likely made film critics reconsider their career choices. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you're glad you missed this summer. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at movies released in summer 2018 that went generally unseen by audiences, and for good reason. Number 10. The Darkest Minds Tell us if this sounds familiar. A bunch of teenagers with special abilities go on the run from the big bad government against a post-apocalyptic setting. For their safety and yours, please turn over your children. Oh, and as if that wasn't blatant enough, the star of the movie is Amanda Stenberg, who also played Rue in The Hunger Games. This adaptation of Alexandra Bracken's hit novel doesn't even try to hide the fact that it's cashing in on the young adult craze. <laughs> However, the studio apparently didn't get the memo that this fad pretty much died out after the release of Mockingjay Part 2. Even with a talented filmmaker like Jennifer Yeun Nelson, the film couldn't bring anything new to this drawn-out genre, generating little interest from audiences. That's right, you're the mind reader. I can't read minds. I can barely understand my own thoughts. Number 9. Life of the Party Speaking of tired premises, Life of the Party stars Melissa McCarthy as a recently divorced woman who decides to finally get her college degree. But you're going to school here now? Oh, she's thinking about it. It's not for sure yet. It's pretty for sure. We've seen this idea done before in numerous other movies and sitcoms. Granted, it's not impossible to give a familiar setup a fresh coat of paint, but this comedy doesn't even bring a paintbrush. McCarthy and real-life husband Ben Falcone have natural chemistry whenever on screen together, but the results are often underwhelming when Falcone directs his wife, and this film is no exception. I'm sorry, you son of a bitch. No, you're the son of a bitch. You're oh. the son of a bitch! Wait. Well, at least McCarthy is poised to make a comeback in the acclaimed Can You Ever Forgive Me, which has a pretty ironic title the more we think about it. Number 8. Action Point On the one hand, it's not like Action Point was destined to be a cinematic masterpiece. It is a gross-out Johnny Knoxville comedy, after all. You know it's not my listening season. You should have told me louder. On the other hand, the Jackass movies were funnier and more creative than they had any right to be. It was epic. It... That's my damn legacy. The same can be said about Bad Grandpa, which scored an Oscar nomination for its makeup effects. So, as strange as it may sound, we actually have come to expect a certain level of quality from Knoxville. The fact that this film was inspired by a real New Jersey amusement park only added to the comedic possibilities. And voila! Kitty Lane! Alas, the stunts aren't nearly inventive, cringeworthy, or funny enough to leave a lasting impression. Oh! Shit! Damn it! Fix that, Rodney! Number 7. Father of the Year Father of the Year is a comedy starring David Spade, produced by Happy Madison Productions and distributed by Netflix. <laughs> oh my god! These three players previously took part in The Ridiculous Six, The Do Over, and Sandy Wexler, all of which were maligned by critics. Okay, I can do this. No one issue, just chatting with a polar bear. Ah! Even on that basis, Father of the Year managed to bring the bar down to a new low. Spade plays a drunken man-child who wants to do right by his son, but instead ruins both of their lives at every turn. He hits rock bottom upon challenging a fellow father, played by Nat Faxon, to a fight, and lazy slapstick ensues. We would say more, but a film this effortless does not deserve an in-depth critique. Oh my God. Number 6. Overboard We can't help but feel depressed almost every time Anna Faris stars in a new movie. It's not to say that Faris isn't funny. On the contrary, she's one of the most underrated comedic actresses in the business today. Be embarrassed in the car, okay? I've got eight minutes to get these pizzas across town. Of course, you wouldn't know this based on comedies like Overboard, though. In this remake of the 1987 film that starred Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn, Ferris plays a woman who takes advantage of a wealthy playboy with amnesia after he mistreats her. You ruined my wife? For better or worse, baby. Will these two horrible people fall in love despite spending most of the movie at each other's throats? If you know the answer, 
there's really no point in watching this unnecessary and mostly humorous shipwreck. I, I've had it. <laughs> Number five, Gotti. Talk about a major disappointment. This mobster drama follows the rise and fall of John Gotti, one of the most notorious crime bosses in American history. It feels right. It feels like it's what he would have wanted. It feels, uh, wherever he is. The project spent years in development hell, with acting heavyweights like Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and Chaz Palminteri all attached at one point. John Travolta eventually landed the role of Gotti, which seemed like an inspired casting choice at first, especially after seeing his physical transformation. What's the matter with you? Me? What's the matter with you? Don't start, Victoria, okay? Even with all of that buildup and potential, however, the final results were not only bad, but 0% on Rotten Tomatoes bad. I swear it on your kid's grave. You won't kill me. How am I gonna kill a ghost? Poorly written and riddled with cliches, the film fails to say anything interesting about Gotti's complex nature, completely missing the point. Yeah, Your Honor, the five lifetime bids, that's okay, but the $50 surcharge, you really know how to stick it to a guy. Number four, Slender Man. Slender Man quickly evolved from an internet meme into a modern day boogeyman. So it makes sense that Hollywood would want to produce a major motion picture about this urban legend. Here is the last site she visited. Slenderman. Screen gems didn't exactly strike while the iron was hot, however, as Slenderman has been around for almost a decade now. In that time frame, Slenderman has already popped up in various movies, TV shows, and video games. The creepypasta has thus become overexposed to the point that he's honestly not very scary anymore. As a result, this supernatural horror film just comes off as stale and redundant, especially in a year that also brought us A Quiet Place and Hereditary. Number three, Billionaire Boys Club. It's painfully obvious why nobody went to see this inevitable financial bomb. Despite featuring some prominent young actors like Ansel Elgort and Taron Egerton, this biographical crime drama had the misfortune of casting Kevin Spacey in a supporting role. Warning, warning. When the sexual misconduct accusations against Spacey erupted in 2017, Billionaire Boys Club had already wrapped up filming. Oh shit. Rather than enlisting Christopher Plummer to reshoot Spacey scenes, the studio decided to quietly release the movie on demand, followed by a limited theatrical run. On its opening weekend, the film only grossed $618 domestically, the worst of Spacey's career. You see, I knew it the moment I saw you, Joe. You're a hustler, just like me. Even if you ignore all the controversy, this is still a poor man's Wall Street that's instantly forgettable. Joe, I'm from Wall Street. Do you think people really get rich playing by the rules? Number two, Death of a Nation. Can we save America a second time? Following up the Razzie winning Hillary's America, Dinesh D'Souza is back to force more far right propaganda down our throats with another documentary that actually makes Fox News look subtle. Democrats smeared him, went to war against him, assassinated him. Now their target is Trump. America! Once again, the filmmakers take their political beliefs to jaw dropping extremes comparing Donald Trump to Abraham Lincoln and Democrats to the Nazi party. This was done by the do-gooders, the liberals, the people who wanted to improve society. What makes this so ironic is that the film plays out like a modern successor to Triumph of the Will. Whether you're a liberal or a conservative, the arguments presented in Death of a Nation lack anything resembling common sense or historical accuracy. The end result is a special kind of awful, receiving a Metacritic rating of one and a Rotten Tomato score of zero. Number one, show dogs. Between Turner and Hooch, K9 and Top Dog, there are one too many movies out there about cops who team up with pooches. Size, how hard can dog shows be? I'll just Google it. Show dogs didn't exactly break the mold with its lame jokes, empty calorie action, and a premise so airheaded that you'd swear the screenplay was written by Odie from Garfield. This fool again. managed to sink lower with an alleged child grooming plot point that was deemed so offensive that the studio recut the film. On top of that, Will Arnett acts opposite a bunch of talking dogs, and the filmmakers didn't even work in a Mr. Peanut Butter joke. This whole movie could have maybe been redeemed if it turned out to be a crossover episode. What is this, a crossover episode? Do you agree with our picks? 
check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.